Tonks. Tonks is a multiplayer tank-to-tank -tank skirmish game from 28 Mag made by someone named Apocrypha now. 28 Mag is huge. They have a bunch of free downloadable rule sets that encourage kit bashing and scratch building. So today we're going to do just that. We're going to kit bash these really, really cheap tanks I bought off Amazon. They have a metal hull and some plastic bottoms and they're pullback to be really, really fun toys. But we're not going to use any of that. We're going to use them as the basis of some grim, dark Warhammer 40k tanks. We're going to cut them up. We're going to add pieces and flare and we're going to paint them super bright Warhammer colors. So I think we're going to build a Space Marine Predator. An Orc Battle Wagon. An Imperial Guard Lehman Russ Battle Tank. And we're going to do a huge conversion to build some sort of Tau Hammerhead-esque vehicle. I am super excited to cut these models up. They are really fun, really inexpensive, really nice little bits of plastic. They're just a nice blank template. My name's Chris. I like to paint things, and today we're going to build some 40k tonks. For all four tanks, I figured the smartest thing to do would be to do a digital mock-up first. So I took a little picture of each one, gave it a fun little Photoshop filter to make it look like a sketch, and kind of drew over them to see what pieces I would have to add to add them to the grimdark future. For the Space Marine, we need to add some side sponsons, maybe an exhaust pipe, and some eagles on the back. First step was taking out the pullback springs. So I unscrewed the bottom of these, which is kind of when I realized that the top half was metal. The weight of these things is a little bit off because of that, but it was pretty straightforward. Uh, the first one I thought I had to cut apart, but it turns out they pop out really easily. Um, so ignore this if you plan on doing this conversion yourself. These things should just pop out the bottom. I'm gonna save these for later because they're kind of fun. Poor tank. So now this is no longer a toy, it's a very serious model kit. The first step is to raid the bits bag of all my Space Marine pieces. Yes, I use the word Astartes because there's different Space Marine bits in there. I'm gonna go through my ruined collection of firstborn bits from my childhood, half of which are painted with crappy little Testors paint, and we're gonna look for a couple of bolters to slap on the side. Now, obviously, on a 40k size tank, you would be using a heavy bolter, but on this small, I guess it's about 15 millimeter scale tank, a regular bolter kind of looks like a heavy bolter. I'm just gonna clip off the hand grips. Slicey, slicey. And shave up some mold lines that like 10 year old Chris never really thought mattered. And we're gonna slap these bad boys to the side. Now I know what you're thinking, that looks really stupid, just glued onto the side. Don't worry, we're going to build a structure around it. Now the easiest way to glue weird materials together is EVA foam. So we just take small strips of EVA foam to kind of make the gun sit flush against the, the side of the tank. And then we're also going to build a, like an enclosure around it. I think, what is it, a side sponson? I don't know. We're gonna pull it away from the side of the hull and give it a little bit of room to really stick out like those massive 40k side sponsons. Now this is a scrap of MDF board. My wife, as I mentioned in the last video, builds tons of miniatures, so I get all of her offcuts. Now I know most people won't have access to these offcuts, but if you know someone who builds miniature dollhouses, ask them for all their offcuts because they are going to be invaluable in this scratch build. They just give me really perfect shapes that I can cut up and glue together and turn into anything I need. So we're gonna make a side sponson with just a weird six, a weird square with a little Lego block peg and just some, just some pieces. It just works perfectly. These things take glue really well, especially super glue. I mean, they bond almost instantly, which actually was kind of a problem later on. 
Now, a fun thing on Space Marine uh, tanks is they have optics on the back. I don't know. They don't have a guy sticking out the top most of the time. So I'm going to glue this thing that will later be the bane of my existence to the top of this tank. I think it looks really cool. It adds to that over-the-top, you know, grim, dark future kind of look. But using EVA foam to attach these was dumb because it makes it really, really rickety. And I don't think I've fixed it yet. Now that the Space Marines are out of the way, it's time to get to the fun stuff. Orcs. Now, the tiny orc tank was honestly the genesis for this entire project. I thought about, you know, scratch building a grot tank, and then I found out about tonks and figured, well, let's just make a bunch of little tanks, because little tanks are the best tanks. So, orc vehicles, I think, are great because they're just scrap. You just throw a plow on the front, maybe a bunch of guns, because we got to have all the DACA, some exhaust tubes, and call it a day. The best part about an orc vehicle is always the spiky ram on the front. So we use a couple square, like, uh, metal fence-looking plow-shaped pieces and just glue them to the front, a little haphazard. Again, orcs are great because you can do things very haphazard as long as they don't fall apart, which is why I'm putting this foam behind them, then you should have no problem. I even decided to glue some teeth to the front. As you can see, super glue bonds instantly with MDF. So be a little bit careful and make sure when you glue something down, you really, really mean it. Because ripping it up is a massive pain. Oaks, 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 oaks. And with our plow sorted, it's time to raid my massive pile of orc bits. We obviously have to add some missiles on the side. We're gonna do a bunch of guns. We gotta add all of the DACA because there's never enough DACA. I'm gonna cut up this Burna Boy Flamer, chuck it on the side. Tonks has no rules about weapons or weapon types. I think the advanced rules have a few things, but it just needs to look cool and the turret needs to spin and it kind of needs to be a tonk. The best part about orc vehicles is we can literally slap a bunch of different things on the side and we're gonna cover them all up with foam later. Give it that bolted down sort of look. I decided to take an orc back banner and just give this guy a back banner. I like to leave my orcs as non-denominational. I don't really, you know, ascribe to one of the main clans. I might have a few orcs here and there that are feeling, you know, a bit goth today, but I like to do universal banners. The best thing about orcs, honestly, is there's no right way to do anything. As long as you just cut up a bunch of pieces of scrap, here I'm using EVA foam, and we just start gluing it haphazardly over the entire model in nice layers and kind of make things look bolted on. These are just going to add so much texture and really, really push that junky orc scrap theme. If you look at Bill Making Stuff's Tonk video, he did a Tonk entirely covered in EVA foam, which is where I stole this idea to a much lesser extent. I toyed with the idea of putting an orc gunner on top. Um, I have a bunch of these orcs that I use for my 15 millimeter Warhammer that I haven't got around to painting because there's so many, but I kind of scrapped it. I didn't love how it looked, and I was honestly really into the tank like this. So I think I'm just gonna call that fully built. Now, probably the most straightforward build on here was the Lehman Rust because, well, the Imperial Guard just kind of have tanks. But we're going to need to add a few extra bits. A gun on the front, I think, is the iconic part of a Lehman Rust. And then we're going to add some side sponsons, much like the Space Marine. Big thing is the serial numbers, you know, having just military logos on it are going to sell it. Now, that flamethrower you might have seen earlier in the Space Marine video, I decided to stick to the front because front gun is best gun. I always wanted to be the front gunner, just burning and shooting people, and a little MDF ladder on the back, just to make it look lived in, I suppose. I have tons of Imperial Guard bits, honestly, from like one kit from my childhood. Those old Cadian shock troops, they came with so many extras. They're all the same extra bit, but they came with tons and tons of them. So I'm just gonna grab a couple of guns and put them on the side. 
Uh, just some basic LAS guns, because same thing as the Space Marine, um, they're just gonna look like heavy LAS guns, or LAS cannons, I don't know. I don't play the actual game of 40k, I just like the stuff. But we're basically gonna copy exactly what we did with our Space Marine tank earlier. We're gonna find some perfectly shaped MDF offcuts and just glue them in place. These guys were almost too perfect, I should've used them. I wish I had just a bunch of these, they would've worked for every single tank. So I slap those over top, and then I use some EVA foam to fill in everything. I, I've been using gel super glue like as long as I've been building models. I don't know, does anyone have recommendations? Is using gel better than the liquid stuff? I don't know, it helps me kind of block stuff out, but it always feels kind of unperfect. This little bit is from a really cheap model kit that I purchased online that is the next video, so stay tuned for that one. I'm gonna teach you the best way to buy cheap model kits and use them as practice. Point is, just grab any spare plastic you have and make it look like what you want it to look like. It, it'll work out perfect. Now, I like taking really thin strips of EVA foam and making uh, rivets with them. I know I could get all fancy and use some plastic card circles, but I find that the square rivets, really chunky rivets, just on a small scale, they have like this kind of metal slug look about them or something. I don't know. It makes it look really silly. And 40k is nothing if not really big and really silly. So we're going to do massive rivets on Tiny Tank. And that pretty much seals the deal for the guard tank. The Tau Hammerhead was the hardest thing to convert in this box, uh, for obvious reasons. It looks nothing like a real tank. I even considered just doing a Chaos tank or something instead, but I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to build something really, really tough out of a Tonk. If we make it hover and we throw in some large exhaust on the back, I think it'll look Tau enough. So by spinning that around, it pulls the gun to the back, which just feels like a Tau vehicle already. But obviously the cow don't... the cow. The Tau don't roll on the ground, I'm keeping that in. The Tau don't roll on the ground, they float through the air. Heresy. Space heresy. For the rail rifle, I found a perfect MDF cut for that. Do you guys remember when everybody fucking hated the Tau rail rifle because it was apparently overpowered? Me neither. I don't play Warhammer. I play Tonks. But I glued that to the top, and I actually glued it kind of off-center. I think it looks so much better that it's not pointing where the old turret's pointing. It makes it look so much more like this is the turret, and the other thing is maybe targeting system or something. I don't know. I love it. it it's cool. I think if it was pointing the same way as the little black part on the front, it would look silly. And then I took some more MDF cuts and just blocked out the back. I, I don't love this piece, but it is serviceable. It doesn't really look like a hunk of wood when it's painted, and that's really all that matters. I just didn't want it to look like a hunk of wood. I glued a big old circle to the side so we can get a nice Tau symbol in there, because the Tau love, you know, curved edges and circles for some weird reason. And then we have to block out the bottom. So I chopped up this nice little window looking piece. It's a little not symmetrical, but that's okay. It's really just going to fill up the bottom and leave space. You're never going to see this when I'm done. So then we have to raid our bits box. Now I have a weird metal tub of bits. These are my actual like textured bits. I was just experimenting with other things I could put on here. That ways to do the exhaust port, uh, you know, something alien looking. I'm just kind of playing around. I even experimented with a, I don't know, pontoon boat design. Like my biggest hobby inspiration Bill making stuff would call this trash Lego or trash doodling. You're just grabbing bits of plastic you have and just putting them down and seeing what works, what shapes you understand. It's a skill that I don't have a lot of, but I'm really working on. These, I think they're from a drum kit piece, like a stand for a, a hi-hat or something, uh, like the little feet that go on a drum kit. They're gonna be our exhaust. I sanded down this really clear plastic to make the super glue stick because I was not positive it was gonna stay. And then after you sand it down, super glue bolts insanely because it gets into all those little uneven surfaces and bonds really well. And now, I mean, look at that. That's pretty Tau-like to me. I think this is super cool. When you add those 
back exhaust ports and you had a big rail rifle on top, all it needs is a way to hover. So I grabbed this semi-translucent base. I don't think Tau use purple hover energy, but they do today. And then I grabbed my pin vise, which is a tool that I never use on this channel and might start, and a Games Workshop flying stand and kind of figured out a way to make it fly. Now, obviously this has to go on after it's primed. Off camera, I added a few extra greebles to each model just to give it some extra detail, just, just to make painting honestly easier when I dry brush a bunch. I took everything outside and did an all over black primer and then a zenithal of Rust-Oleum 2X flat gray, the quote unquote king of primer. The Tau got a nice summer wheat primer because I don't actually own a paint that color. I had to go out and special buy this for this project. Maybe I should paint some more Tau. Now, a lot of videos that I've watched honestly have suggested the best way to paint a tank is to paint it just the same as you would a space marine. So I'm going to paint it like ultramarines because I have about four ultramarines painted. They start with a base of Cantor blue and then layered up to a full crisp edge highlight of a bluish leather white. All of my ultramarines have gold trim from Turbo Dork because it's shiny. And then all of the plastic and black and guns are all a dark blue gray like a military kind of gray so for space marines and apparently space marine tanks i just do like two thin coats of their base color to get really nice even coverage you know the old duncan Rhodes special i guess I have about four Ultramarines painted. I mostly play Black Templar, go figure. Um, but Ultramarines just read super nice on the tabletop. So then I go in and block out all the weapons and the treads with gray. Just something to break up the tank so it's not just a blue blob. Like a smurf. I mean, that's what, that's what I call them even though I have a couple. So then we're going to do some dry brushing. So I mix these two colors pretty much evenly and do a dry brush over all of the blue parts. Now I probably should have uh, done the gray base coat after this might have made my life a little bit easier, but that's okay. So we're just gonna hit all of the edges, just make it not one boring flat panel. And then I do just leather white over all of the gray bits. This is a little striking, but we're gonna do a wash over everything anyway. And honestly, these aren't meant to be perfect. They're supposed to work in a silly game called Tonks. The first bit of brushwork I did on this tank was just some hard details I wanted to block out. We're going to do like that skull, which I think I paint over later. Uh, break up some of that gray and the purity seals in the back, because even tanks are good boys. I even did a couple like tiny little highlights on some of the gray bits because, I don't know, just to make them look a little nicer, a little more professional. And then what's really, really going to sell these is transfers. So I'm going to take my handy dandy Space Marine transfer sheet and put some transfers on the model. And I did not film myself doing the gold, but I added a little bit of gold trim. Now with the transfers, the amount of detail I have to add later is negligible. My secret with transfers is you just do a varnish over them before applying a wash, that way they don't disappear. I'm gonna use Vallejo Black Wash. Uh, no other reason than I'm out of null oil. Alright, time to paint the orc tank. Again, prime the same way, just black with gray over it. But the first thing I'm gonna do is make this bad boy look super rusty. I've done this exact same paint scheme on a few different things. We're gonna use a dry rust from the army painter, which is like a very, very matte 
rust finish. It's kind of nice, but I water it down. I don't know if this is the right way to use it, but you water it down and paint it over the Zenithal, and it gives you a nice, like, rusty undercoat. Like I said, I've used this in a few videos. This is like the Bill Making Stuff Rust Special. This is kind of the nice way to start and get a nice rusty undertone. While that dries, we're going to plan our paint scheme. So I think I'm going to do red for the orcs because red ones go faster. We're going to go red all the way up to orange for the extreme highlights. Use a couple of different metals to break up the red orange. And then some dry brushing. So after that rust dries, you just dry brush over a, a dark metallic. I think it's Army Painter Dark Steel, probably. Probably Dark Steel. Then I use a second lighter metal, probably plate metal from the Army Painter again. Uh, just a downward dry brush, just to catch some of the edges. And This is a nice rusty undertone, and I really like the start of this vehicle. The next step is red base coat. So to keep that rust showing, you're not going to do a full 100% coverage base coat. I'm actually going to do two light base coats, thin down red paint, and we're not going to touch the edges at all. We're going to specifically avoid the edges and kind of leave that rusty edge and some of that paint showing on the bottom. That second coat isn't even going to be... It's probably be 5% less of a coat than the first one, just to add some differentiation. Then we grab that faded orange paint, and we're going to use this to pick out a few panels and break up that red. So I just did a few uh, solid panels here and there, just kind of trying to spread it evenly, but also letting my brain not, you know, create a pattern or something, just so it's not all red and silver. I do come back later and go over a few of these panels in a metallic color just to add some extra, you know, breaking up of that red, like I said. Even painting this fun little hunter-killer missile thing on the back. Then I used a couple more metallics just to dot a few extra little details, like this back hatch. The front of this tank was also screaming, I'm a face and I need an eyeball. And then we pet a cat for good luck. Next, we're going to make the entire tank look really dusty, so we're going to break out an off-white paint and just do some, some dry brushing over the whole thing, catching the edges, breaking up all of the color, making everything like a cohesive dustiness. I don't really think that rusty metallic should get like a full proper edge highlight, so we're going to do this to kind of break up all of our edges and give us a fake edge highlight later. I don't even think I go back into a detailing step for this orc. If I do, it's minimal. Next step, again, same process as I've used a hundred times on rusty things, is my homemade brown wash. I'll link in the, the top where I've used this on other builds. This is a really thick wash of water, some paints, and a little bit of soap that just seeps into all the recesses, and it's going to be really, really messy, really, really pool. Uh, so we just grab a paper towel and kind of pull some of it off, leaving most of the wash in the recesses and giving us kind of a grimy texture on the top. I want it to look rough and battle-worn and not clean. This is an orc tank. They don't do clean. After that, I did a couple of quick highlights just to break up some edges. Nothing nothing fancy, nothing you've never seen before. And our orc tank was done. Next up is the Imperial Guard, Lehman Russ. Uh, this was really straightforward. I'm gonna skip over the whole process just to save time and throw in a montage. It's painted basically the same as the Space Marine, except we're gonna use different colors. So we're gonna use Castellan Green, highlighted up to Elysian Green. Then we're gonna use Dark Blue Gray and a khaki color for the other two base coats. So we're gonna do a wash and some dry brushing. Super straightforward. I'm a DJ, 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 I'm a
Last but not least, we have our Tau Hammerhead. Well, it's not a hammerhead, but you get the point. This model, uh, like I showed earlier, are primed with a color on top of it, like a Tau Ochre, I think is the technical term. And I didn't have a great color for the second brownish Tau color, so I'm gonna use like a skin tone. I, th I think it's gonna work. Lose skin tone, maybe mix it with some brown. I don't know, I'll try and make it happen. I don't really like mixing paint because it can be tough and if you ever have to replicate it it's just a pain i know that's like half of the skill of this you know this art form but i like just having bottles of colors that being said we're going to take our flesh color and just block out a couple of spaces to break up that ochre yellow color i'm not going to do camouflage but i am going to use this we're going to use an off white and do a dry brush over the whole thing and kind of Get a nice... We're, this thing shouldn't have edge highlights. Tau things are very, very round. So I'm just going to do a, a dry brush to get, like, a nice fuzzy roundness to the top barrel. And and then, you know, a basic edge highlight. But really, I'm just trying to create some, like, value and some contrast. By doing this, like, off-white highlight over all these round corners, we're going to get them to stand out nicely. Next step, sepia shade. We're going to wash the whole thing with some seraphim sepia, being very, very careful not to let this run everywhere. I probably should have varnished this model first. Uh, it's even picking up a little bit of the white I dry brushed. I can be like the most impatient painter at times. It's just something you got to, I don't know, it's something you got to deal with. But I worked this into all of the cracks on the bottom just to create shadow and some detail. I don't really, really want this to pool and give us tide marks that I'll never be able to fix because I don't actually own a dropper of paint uh, that I used to prime it with. When that dried, it was a little splotchy, but from far away, it's it's gonna look nice. It just left the whole model looking a little bit warmer. That's the whole point of sepia. We have some nice warm red shadows, but my rushing did kind of ruin a couple of the base coats. That's okay. We're gonna take our time. This was a totally different day that I did this part. We're gonna use the same off like blue, black, gray color that we've been using before to do all of the engine blocks and, you know, all the pieces that, if this was any other army, would probably be metallic, but on a Tau, they would be like some sort of future composite plastic. This is a great color. I think I need to buy multiples of this color. I also used it to just like cover up any areas that you weren't gonna see, but needed a solid color. And then I highlighted the whole thing with an off-white. I don't remember what color. But these sharp highlights on all of the hard edges are gonna be a nice contour to the rest of the rough like gradient of the rounded model. next transfers so I don't actually own any Tau transfer sheets I only own a handful of Tau units and I got them off eBay so I cut up Tau's one of their main uh, rivals which was Necrons I used one of their transfer sheets for a Tau symbol and I also grabbed this transfer sheet from a model that you'll see in an upcoming video just some really really cheap robot of a show that I've never heard of if you know anything about this robot let me know but I took the Japanese and I put that on the back because not that Tau speak Japanese, but if anyone were to speak Japanese, it would be the Tau. I also put a couple of other symbols just to add some flair. But now we have all four Tonks done. That's right, all four Tonks. Stay tuned for the glamour shots.
that was all of my tonks. Uh, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I had a blast making these. This might be my highlight project of the year. Um, I kind of want to make four more, but I don't know that I have enough bits or enough patience. I'm painting like literally three other tanks, one for Snarling Badger, one for uh, just myself, and then one I just painted an orc tank. So I think it's the year of tanks, people, the year of tonks, if you will. Uh, apparently everyone on YouTube is painting tonks. That's where I got this idea. Either way, like, comment, subscribe, all of that fun stuff if you want to see more from me. Uh, if you have any thoughts on my tonks, let me know. If you have any thoughts on future tonks and you think I should make four more, let me know and I absolutely will. Either way, I'm Chris. I like to paint things. Thank you for making it this far. Have a good night. If I don't post by the end of the year, have a good new year, everybody. Uh, either way, take it easy.